Surrounded by a cloud of bodyguards, politicians and journalists, Turkish President Recep Tayyip Erdogan continued to tour the areas most affected by the catastrophic earthquakes that struck Syria and Turkey on Monday. With the death toll at over 20,000 and rising, Erdogan has faced heavy criticism for the state's slow response. Depremin yıkım etkisi 10 ilimize ve 500 kilometrelik bir alana yayıldığı için işimiz maalesef çok zor oldu. The world continues to step up efforts to help victims. Political friends and foes are sending humanitarian aid and personnel. Even Ukraine has sent rescue teams despite Russian bombs continuing to fall on its territory. Protests against the international aid response in northwestern Syria after this week's devastating earthquakes. Nearly 12 years of civil war have left a legacy of destruction and fractured political control, which has slowed relief efforts. With millions of internally displaced people already living in camps, it was an area that could ill afford a disaster like this. The, the camps are, are terrible. It's, it's rain, so there's a lot of mud. Um, the tents are cold. If there's no good drinking water, cholera will... Uh, will explode almost and uh, on top of that now we'll have we're having this uh, this earthquake political control is divided between rebels and the syrian government most aid to the region comes via turkey but the situation is complicated by western sanctions on damascus warring factions and the situation on the border um, the entire area is, is largely reliant on one border crossing point from Turkey for UN-led uh, assistance. Um, that is already or wasn't already sufficient in order to make sure that we're able to meet the needs, the everyday needs of Syrians. But we need to make sure that Syria isn't forgotten. Um, I think it's important to recognise that the earthquake doesn't recognise borders. The U.S. military shot down a second high-altitude object in American airspace, this time off the coast of Alaska on Friday. The White House said it was posing a reasonable threat to civilian flights. So I can confirm that the Department it is still unclear where this object came from, but it was approximately the size of a small car. We don't uh, understand the full purpose. We don't have any, comp we don't have any information that would confirm a stated purpose for this object. Um, we do expect to be able to recover uh, the debris uh, since it fell not only within our territorial space but on what we what we uh, believe is is frozen uh, water. So uh, it, uh, a recovery effort will be made. This comes after a Chinese surveillance balloon was shot down last week, raising security concerns and a fierce political blowback against the Biden administration. The aftermath in Kyiv of Russia's latest air attacks on Ukraine. There were no reports of casualties in the capital, but the widespread shelling forced people to take refuge in metro stations across the city. Elsewhere, sirens sounded during early morning raids. From Kharkiv in the east to Lviv in the west, authorities reported airstrikes. Valery Zaluzhny, the commander-in-chief of the Ukrainian armed forces, tweeted about the attacks. He pointed to the fact that Russian missiles entered Ukrainian airspace at the junction of its border with Moldova and Romania. Ukrainian President Volodymyr Zelensky condemned the attacks as an affront to NATO. Кілька російських ракет пройшли повітряним простором Молдови та Румунії. Черговий доказ того, що терор не знає і ніколи не знатиме жодних меж. Черговий доказ того, що захист України це захист всієї Європи і світу, кожної країни, яка просто хоче Жити. Сьогоднішні ракети – це виклик НАТО, колективній безпеці. Це терор, який можна і треба зупинити. Russian forces have intensified ground attacks on the front line in recent weeks. But this is the first major air assault for some time. Ukraine believes Russia is in the early stages of a new offensive, ahead of the first anniversary of the invasion on February 24th.